Welcome, welcome. So you've made it to the halfway mark. Mark, did you not shower today? I did. <laughs> <laughs> do you not want to come and sit with us? Um, come on in, Sandy. Hi. So how are you feeling? How's everybody doing? I think we've got a, I think we've got probably an equal mixture of people who are just killing it and some people who are doing it. They're not in it to win it yet. <laughs> it's not happening for them. So you don't have to raise your hand. Um, but this is what I wanted to talk to you about. A lot of people have asked me about um, what kind of things to eat, what should you be eating, and also like looking at some of the some of the journals. I don't look at all of them, but do I do glance at some of them? And, oh God! <laughs> and not on an oops, oops, I had a cheat day or whatever. But some some people are consistently going out to eat, unfortunately, and. When going out to eat, <laughs> and it's okay, that's the first part is accepting it and knowing that you're doing it. Because if you've got to first accept it, I can't sit here and tell you that you're eating too much or you're eating the wrong kinds of foods. You have to say, you know what, I'm not doing it right. I need to get in it to win it. And that can only come from you. That's going to have to dig deep for that one, as much as I'd love to be able to beat it out of everybody. It happens to everybody. So I do want to say last night when I was putting this together, I mean, this is all stuff I know, I've been doing this for years, but it is always good, even when you know how to do it, to get back in it. Even when you think you've known everything, not that I think I know everything, that's why I love to go to conferences and things like that, there's always something new, but it just brings it back to you. And a lot of things I was having to do a little self-evaluation on, just putting it out there. So, it's okay, it happens to everybody. It's everybody, I mean, I'm struggling. This this four weeks has been hard for me. Oh, I'm in it to win it now. I'm making that decision right now to get after it for this last time that we have. I mean, I've been doing okay, but I've been easily allowing myself to go, eh, it's just one. <laughs> There's never just one. One is not in anybody's vernacular. It does not have that phrase, it doesn't happen. There is no just one. You have to be super, super good. And if you're that good, you're probably not even having just one. All right, so I want to talk to you about meal prep. And I'm going to send this to everybody, so you will get a copy of this. I don't feel like if you don't want to, you don't have to take notes. We'll have this entire thing. Um, it's nine pages, so a little lengthy, but I want you to have it so that you can refer back to it. Because I'm trying to put this in. There's, I mean, you can get Google to say anything you want if you search it enough. And you can, there's just tons and tons of things on Google, so I'm trying to put things in a more usable, realistic, this is what it is. What it boils down to. So there's all different ways to say it, but here you go. So a couple of benefits of why it's so important to meal prep and let's see, just some things that you can tell yourself while you're thinking about it, like when I was too lazy last night and I was like, I just don't want to. So there's that. You can have that one. Or these are the things that you can say on Saturday or whenever you've decided that you're going to meal prep and you're going to start this, that if you don't prep, you will fail. So fail to prepare, prepare to fail. That's like the oldest thing that like Einstein first said. It's crazy true. It's with really with anything. But if you don't prep your food, you will be stuck like junk. Because you'll be in that place of where you have to go out to eat, or you have to, you don't want anything. You're so, you're now so hungry, you're not going to make all the good food that you bought in your refrigerator. That does not look good, and you don't want it. But if you spend that hour or two once a week prepping your food, even when those times come up that you go, Ugh, I just don't want this. It's already there, it's made for you. You're hungry and you know you'll feel better as soon as you eat what you know. So some of the things to think about with that, it's portion control with no thought. You've already taken a day that you thought out the portion on it and measured it out. You already know what's in there. You do not have to, it's absolutely zero thought friendly. Um, it helps you to understand what a true serving size is. So when you take that minute to measure it out, and you've got three to four ounces of meat for women, maybe five to six for men, depending on how you know tall you are. Um, 
you've got your vegetables, and you've got your car, your complex car. So it's all there. So, and I know that this is stuff that some of you already know, but when you have, you know, I'm holding up big cue cards that check it out, <laughs> know it again. We're going to think about this. Um, it also helps you to visualize when you do end up having to go to a restaurant. And I don't know how you feel about that. If you're, for me, when I'm doing something like this, it's not very easy for me to go out. I don't have a lot of desire to not be the person that's eating what everybody else is eating. So it's not a lot of fun for me to go out. But there are times that I go, and when I do, I check out the menu before. I already know what I'm going to have, and then if it's something that I know is too big for a true portion size, as soon as you get in, tell them, bring me a box with this, because I'm going to either put it away or know that you're going to split it with somebody, because it's going to be too much. Even on a cheat night, you can still get, a, you know, by now your stomach should be shrinking a little bit, so you have a little bit less than what maybe you would, you know, the entire dinner portion of whatever it is. Um, so meal prep when you, so this allows you, so say you're at a birthday party or something and you have your food prepped with you, and you've got your little lunch box that you brought with you, while they're having no control with the pizza and the cake, you've got your food. And so you have now satiated that feeling of not, that you can get past it. This is a, this is a hurdle that you can get over through this one. And you, you might have to tell yourself a couple of times during the event. And it just it's like that for everybody. I mean, if this was super duper easy, this would be, everybody would be the same size. Everybody would look the same. We'd have a bunch of fitness models running around. It's not that easy. Um, make a list before you go grocery shopping. This will help you stay on track. This will help you go to just what you need to get. So if you already have your meal of what you're prepping, transfer that over to a list. Transfer that into the store, get what you need to get, and get out. You go into Walmart hungry. <laughs> you have to come out with things you had no idea. Your box, your basket's gonna be so full that you things jump in there like I don't even know what's happening. Especially if you go with kids. Because then you use the kids as excuses. Mine are now 18 and 60, and I cannot use that as an excuse anymore. Um, definitely don't shop when you're hungry. Even if you have to get something when you first walk in, go in and get, you know, a little thing of tuna, or just, just don't ever walk into, that's like walking into, you know, like an alcoholic walking into a bar. It just doesn't work out. If you go in hungry, you will think of every excuse in the book to justify why that's okay, why you just need that this one time. Um, journaling, y'all are already doing that. And I hope that you continue to journal because does it not, I mean, let me get some feedback. Are you feeling like when you put it on there and you see it and you go, oh, no. <laughs> it kind of, you know, are you losing, you don't want to lose that where you go, ah, that's all right, that's just this one time. Go back and look at it and see so that you can see the things that you're printing out so you can see what you're doing. Hey, have a seat, there's a chair right up front. So you can see what, what's going on and how you're doing. See, look at the times of the day where maybe you're, you know, you can't remember today's Wednesday and you can't remember Monday that you did the same exact thing and then last Friday you did the same exact thing at the same time. So again, this is where meal prep comes in so that you don't fall into those traps. Um, give yourself a day that you're going to meal prep. Like, I don't know, it's easiest for me to do on Sunday. Not a lot going on, you know, either you can get your groceries the day before, you can do your grocery shopping that day. If you have kids, involve your kids in something like that. If you like to cook, this is your chance to really shine. Come up with things that are fun to eat, that are doable, and they don't have to be just yuck. I do sometimes, that's, I'm bad about getting to a place where I'll just eat right out of a Ziploc bag. Cold, hot, doesn't matter, just eat it. <laughs> just to get it done, because I know it'll make me feel better. You don't have to be like that. I'm, I'm busy a lot, so that's where, for me, it just gets easier to do that that way. Because I don't like to cook, so I feel you on if you don't like to cook. It sucks. But, that's the nice thing about prepping. You pick out what you're gonna eat, and you can make a bunch of it 
on that one day and get your spouse to help you out. You know, can do it together. Because really, anything like this, everything that you're doing on your diet, eating healthy, is good for everybody in the family. So we're not wanting to look for something for, you know, looks at something different for your kids. Your kids should be eating this way. They should be eating, you know, spouses should be eating the same way so that you're together and you're on the same path together. So if you can help encourage your, your family, you may have to spice it up a little bit or do something a little extra. I know I was telling some of y'all when I, when I threw in the spaghetti squash and at first they were like, mm -mm, not gonna do it, not touching that. I don't know what it is, I'm not touching it. But all they had to do was try it. And then now we don't even eat spaghetti. So it's just a matter, sometimes it's just a matter of trying it and trying it with an open mind. And really for kids, I mean, you know that it's good if they just were like totally on it. Um, so journaling helps you to stay honest with yourself and it helps you to, you can write down when you're journaling, you can write down already, you know, if you know that this is what your meals are going to be, you can, you can pinpoint your meals and what your calories are going to be. Make sure you're getting enough, make sure you get, your macros are good, if you're getting enough proteins, you're getting enough carbs. Um, and so that you can fix and change things. You can add to it or take away if you need to. Uh, give yourself a meal. I say I'm, I'm a big proponent of, of not this super restrictive, you can never, as soon as I say never to myself, it's on and off. Mm -mm. I don't do never very well. So if I say no, that I can never have it again, then I, I will mess up. And I, because that's not how I want to live. This, that's not living. So we're trying to do sustainable, healthy living for your life. With that, just make that be one meal. So when you have the one meal, then you can get a little taste of something. Do what you need to do. Try to maybe not so crazy. Hopefully you'll get better. Because you know, definitely if it makes you sick, then you know you don't want to stop doing whatever that was. Because after a week of healthy eating, you don't like that meal. It didn't do well with your body. That's your body's way of telling you, um, did you just stick garbage in me? Because I don't like it. <laughs> um, so, that will make you feel better with knowing that you can have that one thing, whatever that may be. And if that day that you just couldn't control it and you had five or six of that one thing, I mean, just hop back on the train as soon as you can. Don't spend a lot of time beating yourself up. It's just what we happen to do. Um, you probably will need to invest in some little plastic containers, the black bags, Tupperware. It's easier to me when I do it if they all look the same. So I can go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that's how I build it. Just straight down. I do my breakfast, a snack, a lunch, <coughs> another snack, and then when I'm really getting into it, I'll do dinner so that I do not have to think about it after working nine, ten hours at night. I just come in, pull my thing out pop it in the oven or in the microwave, whatever. Um, so there's something, some people do it where they just make it all and then they, they, did, they dish it out as they go throughout the day. If it's easier for you to do it that way, I would definitely do it that way, whatever, whatever works for you. But the thing is, there's no real magic to this. There's no, what if I had a pill, man, I'd be so rich. I'd be so wealthy. You just have to decide how bad you want it. So it ultimately comes down to how bad do you want it? Is it worth me? And I promise you I have conversations with myself daily. And I get I get confronted with something and I have to make a decision. Everything's about the decisions that you make. Is this going to be a good decision for me for the next week if I make this decision right now? If I get into this Thing of icing. If I get into, if I just have just one Oreo, if I eat those starbursts that you know somebody brought me, I'm just saying those are things that you have to decide daily. They're going to confront you. There's nothing we can do to take those away. So that's when you have to have this conversation with yourself. How bad do I want it? Do I want it that bad? Is it worth it to me? And that's when you have. That's when you get real. Because it, then it puts it all back. On you because there's only so much that we can do we can't control what you do the other 23 hours of the day that you don't come to class and it doesn't help you to eat quietly with no one in the house 
and nobody sees me. I know what I'm doing, I but nobody it doesn't count. <laughs> I wish it did. Oh, I wish it didn't count. I wish. Right? And I got your fingers crossed, your legs crossed. It didn't matter. No one saw it. And that is what we do. I do it. Everybody does it. I used to hide food under my bed when I was young. No one saw it. Nobody missed those Girl Scout cookies. I'm okay. But it counts for you. You and yours. You and when you look in that mirror, it has to be up to you to make those changes. Um, so some of y'all have asked me too. Well, so you want me to meal prep, and then I don't even know what to do. You don't. I don't know what kinds of foods. I don't know where. What, how much of it? How, what, what is a good one? What it, what's going to be the better one for me versus something else? And I know everybody has got particular tastes, and they don't want to eat certain things. And some things are gross, and some people are super picky. And some people find things that they like, and that's the only thing that they want to eat. So this is where you kind of have to try to expand your palate a little bit, or you will get so utterly bored out of your mind. It would be so gross. Um, some of the things, give me, somebody tell me something that they use for a protein. Mapuchin breast. Mapuchin breast? Yep, that's a good one. That's actually going to be your best one because you can eat it all the time. You can eat chicken breast all the time, skinless chicken breast, preferably the white meat, but at this point, you know, whatever. As long as it doesn't have skin on it, you can eat that. Um, and you can eat it all, so it doesn't have a lot of mercury in it. It doesn't have, you know, doesn't have, it has almost like zero fat when you pull out all the skin. So that's a good one to eat. What were you going to say? Tuna. Tuna? Tuna is awesome. The only thing about tuna, just kind of try to be careful so that you're having it all, all the time. It does have, it could tend, tend to have some mercury in it. So you don't want to have that build up in your, but everything in moderation, just every other day or every other couple of days, it's, that's an awesome, Especially the packets, but even now they have flavors. <laughs> when you're in a pinch, that's good. What? Does it not have like lots of sodium? Um, when it's not, not when it's just by itself. So if it's just plain by itself. Now, if you take tuna and you dump it in with a whole bunch of mayonnaise and some relish, relish and now it's no longer some sort of concoction. It's not even tuna. You don't to taste tuna. <laughs> But, you know, a little bit of lemon juice, maybe some pepper, and it, that, that does it. So tuna actually has got a lot of omega-3. I mean, all of our, the seafoods are going to have omega-3, which is good for your heart. So they are a good heart-healthy um, food to have. Let's see. What are some other ideas about? Black beans. Black beans is good. Turkey yogurt. Greek yogurt is good. Ground turkey. Ground turkey is good. Red meat. Red meat. Okay, so red meat. Um, I actually put some, I, I wrote you up this whole list, so just throwing it out there. Um, about 8 ounces, which is about a cup of Greek yogurt has 23 grams of protein in it. So I know that, what is, I don't know what that brand we were talking about has, that one, that brand starts with an O, I think this comes in a, Icos. yeah, Icos has a new thing, it's got like 15 grams of protein or something in that one little cup and not a lot of sugar, so those are really good if you want to eat those. Now the difference in that is, do you feel satisfied with that? I mean, is that something that's going to be good enough? Usually things like that don't satisfy me. In a pinch, if for a snack, absolutely. That's going to be more, that will be a good snack. Will it be necessarily filling to have as your meal? Not necessarily. It doesn't really work out, not really for anybody. Um, Pretty much, if you're going through the line, I mean, everything that Jeff said so far, so that, that to me says that you know. So you're we asking about red meat. So a fillet, um, a sirloin, um, top round, bottom round, those are all leaner meats. If it's got a lot of marbling in it, don't go to that one. Even when you're looking for it, if it says, um, look for something that says choice or select. It says prime going to have more fat in it, although it might taste better or grill better, <laughs> it's, it's not it's going to be better for you, um, but those are also going to have higher fat within the actual piece of meat. So you're looking for that, for steak or something like that, you, 
I would have it more than one or two times a week in your in your meal prep, and you're at about 23 grams of protein, which is about what you want, especially for a female, 20 to 25 grams per your meal. Men can tolerate a little bit more. If you're wanting ground beef, which I haven't seen a lot of, I usually see like extra lean or you know, I think the commissary has it, the 95, 95, 5%. That's the one you're going to want to get. So that's going to give you about 18 grams of protein with the least amount of added fat to it. Or not added fat to it, but the least amount of fat in it. Now think about ground or any kind of beef like that. You're not going to want to like kill it. It's already dead. <laughs> it's not going to be shoe leather if you cook it too, too much. Um, you got whey protein powder, but again, I don't like, I mean, I would prefer to eat my calories than drink them. Some people like to drink shakes. It's, you know, that's something. If you're going to drink shakes, I would drink it from your home so that you know what goes inside of it. It doesn't matter where you go, tropical smoothie, um, the smoothie place here on base. All of those, I mean, they can, they can produce you a good protein drink as long as you get that smaller one. But you are, all of that fruit they have is soaked in sugar water. Wow, so good. <laughs> um, so pretty much if you're doing, thinking about protein, just make sure it doesn't come out of a box, that it's a whole raw food, and you'll be pretty safe with that. As long as it doesn't have a lot of processing in it. I mean, then there's all kinds of things that say protein that, you know, the frozen food section? <laughs> Don't go with those. Um, some of the things, you know, eggs. For a whole egg, you've got six grams of protein. I wouldn't recommend eating a bunch of just whole eggs, but throw in a white, that only has 17 calories in it, and 3.6 grams of protein. You add several of those to your one egg, you're not going to be able to tell the difference that you have just one whole egg. You know, like, you like, I love the yellow part. I can't take the yellow part. I think they're weird. I don't know where they came from. Um, so eggs are another great thing. And who says you just have to have eggs for breakfast? You can have them. You can boil up some eggs and just have them as a snack. You can just put down a lot of those. Now you got to chuck that yolk. So don't be eating that yolk. One time. You can eat the yolk one time in your day, and then everything else you need to have a white. Eat the white with it, or eat it in that meal. Um, pork chops, boneless pork chops. That's another one if you like those. I'm a huge fan. My husband likes them, I don't like them. Chicken breast, that was the first thing I said, which is really good. So you know about that. Turkey. Um, here's some, you can have yellowfin tuna, you can have halibut, wild caught salmon. Um, any of the white fishes that are in the frozen section, those are about 21 to 25 grams of fat, I mean of protein in those per serving. So those are good. Um, shrimp, somebody was saying they like to eat shrimp, I don't know if that, um, who was saying, but raw shrimp, I love shrimp. Shrimp is good, it does have a little bit of fat, but that's okay. Don't be afraid of fat that come naturally, like that. And but 16 grams of protein for four ounces of, of raw shrimp. So if you like that, that's good. Eat it up. Um, you can add tuna in the can, provided it's not packed in oil. That's a huge fat punch when you get that oil one. It's just much better off without it. Now, if you want to get a pack and you want to put a tablespoon that you measured out of olive oil in it, or you know something like that then you can do that. But when it's packed in vegetable oil, it's a lot of it in it. And you're eating way more fat than you need to. Um, we're talking about beans. So navy beans, dried lentil, um, those are those are going to be anywhere from 20 to 20 to 22 grams of protein. Beans and lentil are actually like the perfect food because they have your carb and your protein in which is so awesome. they have got a small amount of fat in them depending on how yummy they are. Just throw some salsa in your black beans, super yummy, and that's it. Then you're done. Um, deli meat. Some people like stay away from deli meat. I personally, I like deli meat. <laughs> so, sulfites and whatever else it's got in it. Um, I think you'll be all right, everything in moderation, if you prefer to have lunch meat as your 
you know, to have your four ounce or two ounce serving. And I would need it for every meal. I try to come up with something else. Um, something you may not know, but green peas. There was somebody else that was telling me they were eating green peas. But green peas have seven grams of protein for a cup. Now, I don't think I'd eat a whole <laughs> cup. That would be a lot, but it's just surprising how much. And wheat germ. Who would think to brew wheat germ? You could throw a wheat germ on something and not even know it's there. I'll put it in your shake and not even know it's there. So you can add that. So that's got six grams for one ounce. And quinoa. Quinoa has eight grams of protein. And so that's a good, well-rounded food. Um, you can also use all those same things I was talking about, the beans, for your carbohydrates. So give me some ideas for carbohydrates that y'all may be having. Rice. Right. What, what did you say? What kind of, on your rice, what kind? Brown rice? Brown rice. White rice. Um, There's a mixture that's Yeah. You're better off with being brown rice. And the reason being, you know, brown rice takes like 45 minutes to cook versus, you know, 20 minutes to do white rice. And the reason that is, because it's all the work's been done for you. And so that's the reason, that's the difference between a carb and a complex carb is the, comp the complexity of it is that your body has to work for it. So it's got to work, so it's, it's trucking along and, and getting busy while you've eaten it. So if you eat something that's already been processed, then you eat it, your body goes, whew, thanks, take vacation, I'm done. And so it doesn't have to do anything for it. So there's no value in it. It's going to go straight to glucose. And that's where your body will, your body's very smart, and it will use everything that it can that's easy to get to for energy first. So then we're not getting into any stores. Um, what were you gonna say? I took um, lentils and made hummus out of it. Mm -hmm. So, cause like I wanted to see the raw carrot or salad right. or something like that. So. And that's perfect. <coughs> and you're just, when you, and I've had some really good, somebody, I think Maria made some, she made some really good homemade hummus. That's super good. Just, just be mindful of, just know how much oil that you're putting in it and it shouldn't be swimming on top. Just that's, I think that's a good rule of thumb. It may not be like the other stuff out that you buy, but that's awesome to do something like that. Guacamole is awesome. Make up some guacamole, but here's the thing that you gotta watch out for. Nuts. Nuts are super good. They're good for your heart. They're a good satiator. They are, um, there's so many good things in them, but they are one of the things you can very easily, like within two bites, you can overeat nuts. So sticking with almonds, and it's a small amount, it's like nine. It's super small. And when when people eat them, the same way they do red wine, that's a bottle, that's what I'm supposed to get for me, it's good for my heart. That's a good one. It is good, one glass. And it's like a four ounce pour, what it's talking about. Not the typical, my whole bottle fits in this glass. <laughs> Not that way. Um, the other thing too is um, is an avocado. I mean, you could end up over 20 grams fat in a whole avocado, and they're very, they're so, especially when they're ripe and they're buttery and they're oh, they're so good. But they are good for you. And when you are leaning out and everything else, you can add that stuff to your meals throughout the day. But be careful not to sit there and eat the entire. Like I don't. Probably meal prep. Mm -hmm. I might meal menu, but I don't meal prep. But snack prepping is like that will help you every time. You get those snack bags. Right. So you're only having like maybe ten and dollars that's instead totally of totally true, right? Yeah. Because I mean, when you reach in and you get these chips, yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you reach in to get something, maybe you want to grab some pretzels or something. You need to count out what that serving size is so that you know what you've just put down. Because what's on the back of that bag is what you need to do. Now, preferably, you would go to something whole, like maybe not processed at all. So something that, like the carrots and, and um, homemade hummus, or even, you know, celery and guacamole. I know that sounds gross, but it's actually not that gross. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Um, or celery and salsa, or something like that. So it's a vehicle for that dip. Especially if it's a homemade salsa, I'm sure you're watching out for the salt intake. 
that's still something good. Now, um, but prepping it is key. Everything is prepping because you will sit down and mindlessly eat like nobody's business and then you'll just go, oh my God, <laughs> just ate that whole thing. Especially if you're cutting back because you're, you're hungry. Um, anybody else have any good carbohydrates, complex squash. carbohydrates? What? Uh, squash, toothpicks. Yep, sweet potatoes, squash, those are awesome. You want to stick around in the, the 27 to maybe 35-ish carb total in that meal. So depending on so getting out, so about four ounces of a sweet potato give you about 27 carbs. You can have one small um, red potato, little new potato, those kind. That's 27 carbs. So are there are things? What? One. One. <laughs> right. One. That's, so that's, that's like the first four weeks is just cutting back what you normally ate and now starting better. Right. Yeah, and that's, that, and that's what I'm saying. It's okay that this is a journey and this is a start, but yes, one. So one, <laughs> and a four ounces of a sweet potato is not that big. It's just four ounces. Um, let's see, what, what are some other things that y'all be used for carbohydrates? Maybe it's okay, this is amnesty hour, you can tell me. <laughs> there no judgment. I like wraps. Perhaps. I try to get one that has like high fiber, low on my carbs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So just be careful on the wraps and on any kind of bread product. Just looking at what it's made with, how it was made. You know what? What is? Um, what did they take out to make it something? Because sometimes they take out, like usually a low carb something. They've taken out the sugar, but they add in all the fat. So. And then a something that's fat-free, it's more than likely doubled the amount of sugar that's in it. So just be be mindful of things like that. And then when they take the sugar, the fat, and everything else in it, I'm not sure what's in it. Yeah. So we'll be mindful of that. But we don't know. So if you know how to make things like that, make them. There's all kind of recipes on there for um, like on Pinterest. Pinterest is you know queen of everything uh, for making things out of cauliflower. Cauliflower has become this all-purpose. <laughs> really yeah, yeah. It does it. You can do anything with it. You can make pizza crust with it. You can make potatoes with it. You can make um, yeah, cool. pretend <laughs> buffalo wings with it. <laughs> so, right. It just depends on where you want to go with it. Yeah. Right. You don't have to. Like some people like being in the kitchen all day. Yeah, not me. No, I'm with you on that. <laughs> Absolutely not. Any anybody else? What's another one? I like right. the the rice paper uh, wrap. Like the uh, here. Uh -huh. But it's not the cookie, it's like here. And they are very light. Oh, like for like, you know, get those Thai like, fresh rolls and stuff? And I think those, I don't know, I don't even check how much. I don't, honestly, I don't know what those are. Yeah. Like, like yeah. And they, you know, you can move around there. Yeah. yeah. That's your homework, you gotta find out for us. The mushroom breads. And they can't take a cup paper rice. Oh, okay. Yeah. And my ear is now. They do like, I know, the only time I've ever had them is when you, like, when you go to a Thai restaurant and you get fresh rolls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so bad. So I, I, did, I did milk, milk prep, um, like using a biscuit pan, mm -hmm. little um, egg pies. Yeah. So I like stuffed them with bell pepper and eggs, tomato, some hard chorizo, um, and then like recipe it out mm -hmm. on um, that fitness thing so that I had a little breakfast. Right. That was and so, on the days, on the weeks that you prepped, how did you fare versus the week that you oh, forgot? so much. <laughs> right. And that's just what it boils down to. You've got to prep it. you got to prep it. Um, so some of the things I had on here, so it comes down to portion size. So one potato, half of a sweet potato, one slice of 100% whole wheat bread, um, I know that some of y'all like, like when you're vegetables, you know, sometimes you'll just eat just corn or something mm -hmm. like that. And that's, I mean, that's okay if that's, you know, the worst thing that you're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to complain about that. But if you're adding that in addition to maybe some other things, corn doesn't have a whole lot of value in, um, other than being sweet and 
but it's not as bad as people make it out to be. Where it gets a really bad rap is when people put sugar in it and they put butter on it and then it's super yummy, but that's what's, no, don't eat it like that. That's not how we're gonna eat it. Um, some of the other things, I wanted to give you, uh, I don't know if y'all have any of you are doing almond milk or, no, I am. Yeah, almond milk is so good. And just, here's a quick little difference. And not, if you're a milk drinker, that's not a bad thing. Um, in, in a cup of fat-free milk, there's 13 carbs in it. And the reason that that's more than, say, 1% milk, which is almost double, is because that's where, again, they're taking the fat out and they're replacing it with sugar. So that's where the difference is coming in. No, and um, so 1%, a cup of 1% milk has eight carbs in it, and a cup of fat-free milk has 13. So it's just just a difference of, now I'm not a huge milk drinker, so it's not a problem for me, but there are some people that just, man, they got to have their milk. Because one looks like water and the other doesn't. Right, so. <laughs> yes. There's like varieties of almond milk. Right. Right. Now, what, if you knew how to make it yourself, I would say make it yourself. You say almond milk, you right? Sugary kind. Right. And that's not. You don't want to do that. You want to get preferably. Thirty cap. Right. In the unsweetened original, that's just the almond flavor. That's not the vanilla flavor. To me, I personally think it all tastes like vanilla. So when you get the vanilla flavor, it tastes like ice cream. I don't like that when I'm trying to eat cereal. It doesn't. It's just weird. Um, but then when you have almond milk, a cup of almond milk has one and a half grams of carb. So it's not a lot. Now it does have a little more fat, but it's also got all those omegas in it. So it's got a lot of good things in it too. Yogurt, um, low fat yogurt has 17 grams. Fat free yogurt has 18 grams. Um, Greek yogurt only has nine. So there's none of those, any of the things that I've, I have on this list are all good. So use them in, how you want them in your meal prep or how you're going to use them. Um, quinoa was one of the things that nobody nobody said, but quinoa can be used in, you can use quinoa for breakfast, you can use, you can throw that in your in your little cups that you're doing for uh, breakfast. It's just got, it will take on the flavor of whatever it is that you are, um, that you're putting in it. So if it's in with your eggs, It'll be in with your eggs. You, if you toast it up a little bit before you cook it, it'll be real nutty tasting. Um, it's pretty good. I like that. Um, let's see. So, when you're deciding about how much how much protein do I need per day, so does anybody have any questions about that? Is, are you anybody have any concerns? If you looked it up already, you kind of know where you are with that. You kind of want to keep your to keep your muscle mass and where you're going. You want to keep around 0.08 to one gram of protein per body weight that you want to weigh. So you're not necessarily doing it to where you are right now, you're doing it to where you want to weigh. So for especially for women, we're like, ew, I don't want to eat that much. It's, it seems like a lot of protein. It's really not that bad when it's divided up. So you take that whole number or whatever it is that you need, and then you divide it up throughout your day and just make sure that it gets it. And knowing that some things like quinoa, for example, has protein and carbon. So they're not just one thing. <clears throat> I mean, you're getting proteins in other little areas that maybe you're not thinking that you're getting protein. So the other thing too is I don't want anybody to cut out their carbs so much that they just are now, they've gone loopy and they can't. You have to have at least 130 grams of carbs in your daily intake for brain function. That is not just eating, that's brain function. So if any of you have ever gone on a low carb day or you've, and you feel a little cuckoo, -coo, a little cuckoo -coo for Cocoa Puffs, that's why. Because your brain has got, it needs the, that's what it's feeding on. Um, so try not to knock it down so much so that you don't have it anymore. You can also measure it doing about 45 to 65 grand, or percentage, you know, like if you're doing your macros on your my fitness pal, you can, you can move that up and that'll give you how many grams per day that you need. Um, so what's the difference in a good carb and a bad carb? Anybody know? Supposedly it's complex carbs. Right. So pretty much just what I was saying before. If 
If it's a complex carb, your body has to work for it. If it is a regular carb, just plain, it means it's just sugar and it's going to turn immediately. Your body has to do no work for it. So everybody so goes, oh my gosh, I can't do fruit. I can't do fruit. So you have to know your complex carbs because it doesn't say on the little back it's complex carbs. No, right. And that's what this this thing helps a lot. Yeah. yeah. This list that I've given you on here, those are all complex. Okay. All of the <coughs> in its raw is gonna be a complex carb. Even fruit. I know. Everybody goes, oh my gosh, I can't have fruit. I can't have banana. I'm gonna cut that out. But I'm gonna have ketchup. <laughs> you just had way more sugar in that ketchup than you did in that banana. You probably have to eat five of those bananas to equal up to what you just ate in that ketchup. We don't think about sauces and things like that. But they're loaded with salt and sugar. Um, that's why they taste so good. <coughs> so we don't want you to not eat your fruit. If you are hungry and you feel like you need something sweet, have cutie, have something. Have something, have some pineapple. Because what that has in addition to, and we learned about this, on our little game, I think everybody, played, everybody that played the game, the fiber is, right, fiber is carb. Who knew, right? It's just an indigestible carb. So the fruit that you're eating has fiber in it, and that's where it gets this added extra benefit. Even if it's a sugary one, like a pineapple, or it has a higher glycemic index, like pineapple or bananas or um, grapes, and things like that, that has spike it a little bit more, it's still got fiber in it. So it, that's, it still is natural and has value to it. Um, so people say, well, I don't know why I need it. Ew, <laughs> I don't want to eat that. But you should have, anybody know what you should have in fiber a day? Approximately. <laughs> that's, what, that's what most people eat, is yeah. about 15 grams, which is not enough. You need about 25 to 35 grams of fiber, of soluble fiber. See, the fiber doesn't do much for us, the bulking fiber. The soluble fiber is water, and hot water will go through it. But that helps to move your digestion around so you're not feeling like you're carrying around a small child. And it also helps to make you feel more satiated so that you feel fuller. So these are all little things that we don't really think about on a daily basis. Well, I'm going to eat this fiber, and this is going to help me to feel full. That's not what you're thinking when you're eating fiber. Just make sure that it's in your diet. And that's another thing with eating whole foods. So eating things that are raw or not already made for you and not already cooked for you are those things that you're gonna find that have more fiber in them naturally than feeling like you have to you know, suck down some fiber choice pills. Um, anybody have any questions on that? Yep. Oh, so now we're going to talk about alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to talk about alcohol. This was something new. I did not know this, and I fact checked it just to make sure. Anybody can tell me how many calories are in? First of all, can anybody tell me how many calories are in carbohydrate? No, not four. 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 How many in protein? Four. 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 How many in a fat? Nine. 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 How many in an alcohol? Brown. Seven grams. Seven grams. Seven grams. And alcohol. Gram. That's that's small. Oh my gosh. I know. I'm about to freak out. All right. So does anybody know why it's bad to drink, especially while you're doing this, doing something like this? Right. That's one thing. People say I'm gonna have wine. <laughs> I'm gonna have a liquid diet. Yeah. <laughs> I have said that myself a few times. Yeah. Circulation in your body. The circulation? Inflammation in your body. Yes. Inflammation. Um, it your body cannot hold on to alcohol. So it, it has to metabolize it, it has to get it out. So when you drink, it shuts down your fat burning of anything that you were doing so that it can take care of the alcohol, the poison, to get rid of it. So now you're not burning calories anymore, you're burning that seven calories per gram of alcohol you just drank. And who just has one drink ever? Really? Raise your hand, I want to see that. Oh, I didn't. One? Are you kidding me? I don't know. I was just doing half after you told me how yeah. it was a <laughs> I cannot do one. So I would say probably 80% of Americans more like me, they don't do just one. 
And then you have all that to battle. The other thing it does is causes you, so all of our, you know, glycogen in our, in our liver that, was, that helps us with uh, the muscle, um, building our muscles and our energy and all that stuff, it depletes all of that. And you have to start building it again. So sucks. Oh my gosh. Um, right, it eats it all up, and uh, when you, so it makes you hungrier. Alcohol, I guess that goes right into making you hungry. So it, not only are you hungry, it drops your inhibitions. So when you're sitting out at happy hour and everybody else is eating chips and salsa or wings or whatever, after you have one or two, you're like, Shh, here, I don't care. I'm just gonna go for it. And then at that point, you're not counting anymore. So you don't know how many you drank, you don't know how many. So it's, it's this terrible, vicious cycle. And I have been there. I, that's why I can't go sometimes. <laughs> I just can't go. Um, that is not even including the, if there's any kind of sugary extra that goes in. So now, then on the good side, let's just talk about the good things. So let's talk about something that we can do. Because there are going to be times, let's say on your cheat night, you want to have something to drink. What do you think would be a good idea? Vodka soda. Huh? Vodka soda. Vodka soda. Vodka soda. Anything that's clear and white is going to have about 64 grams of fat. I mean, 64 grams, or 64 calories per ounce. Now, who pours just an ounce when you go to the bar? They don't do it at the bar. They pour a jigger. So one and a half. So it's about 100 calories when you get a drink even at like Fridays or something. But if you do like a cup of soda and one of those, then you've got a little something, it's 100 calories, just try to limit it to that. But say you've had six, then now you're up to 600. Yeah. <laughs> or you have a double tall, well, I'm just saying. Um, so just know, just be mindful of that kind of thing when you're doing it. And when it goes to, when it breaks down, just knowing what it's happening from everything you've sort of built up over that whole week. Now gone. Um, it does. In the, well, that's what I was saying about it's, it shuts down. You have just stopped everything so that your body can get rid of the poison. So it starts working on that. It has to burn that up first before it not. It doesn't ever, not ever come back on. I mean, it does as soon as it's done, but that can take up to eight hours to get out of your system, depending on how much drink. Um, so, everybody get right on that calories. Let's talk about water. How are we doing on our water intake? Good job, Ray. Good job, Good job. I'm terrible. I'm the worst example ever. I'll, I'll walk around with this thing all day, and it might look like that. Because <laughs> I'm usually running my mouth, and I'm so thirsty. But um, So, what do you think? How much water should we have? Have body weight. That's a good one. Or this eight by eight, if you think of it like that. How much should you add for if you're going to work out? Even if you don't think that you sweat it out that much. I'd say at least 12 to 24, count on your workout. Mm-hmm. It's 12 ounces for every 30 minutes that you work out. So whatever your half your body weight, eight by eight, Whatever you're doing, you need to add 12 ounces for every 30 minutes. So some of y'all are in here sometimes for two hours. So you got 48 ounces to add to, to your drinking already. Um, what's something else about what's good about drinking water? What's, what else does it do for you? The elimination system. What else? What? It helps keep the function of the Yes. All of those things. So it helps with hunger. Hunger. It's the first thing you should drink when you get up in the morning. Water. Water. It's the first thing you should drink before you drink, <laughs> before you eat anything. You sit down to a meal. Yeah. Eight ounces of water. And you're doing two things. You're putting some filling in your stomach, and it's also helping you to feel more full. Because 80% of people, when they feel hungry, they're actually thirsty, and they have they're totally dehydrated, and they don't even know. Something else that was thought was interesting, that a 2% drop in your body water, does anybody have like a, go into a sort of like a brain coma about two or three o'clock in the middle of the day? <laughs> Maybe after a few meetings or something, right? 
I didn't even realize this, but I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. You have trouble with memory, trouble with basic math skills, difficulty focusing on the computer screen or a printed page. And that's from just a 2% drop in your water. And I know hands down that's happening to me. So make sure it doesn't happen to you. You don't have to focus on it. I've got really to it. I took a nap before I came here. <laughs> so, how's your water doing today? Yeah. Not too good? No, not good. Right. <laughs> and I don't know, you know, you're going to have to admit, you know, I had a girlfriend that had, she used to pop her wrist with, water, with bands mm -hmm. to help her remember. And so she got to take one band off for every eight ounces that she drank. Ah. And sort of as a trigger to help her go, okay, well, I don't, you know, I need to make sure I finish my water. Some people carry around a jug. Some people mark it off, like they have different ways. You know, you can make water taste better with muddled cucumber or lemon or, or lime or oranges or whatever. What about whatever. club soda? Club soda, I mean, club soda is fine. It doesn't have anything in it. Yeah. It's just, so as liquid as a liquid, it's got carbonation in it. But, I mean, if you need something like that to make yourself drink it, then that's much better than a soda. Sodas are terrible. Diet sodas are terrible. My daughter's probably going to die early because she drinks that soda all the time. She just won't stop. Um, so bubbly water is the same as water? Yeah. Provide, there's different kinds, there's different kinds of bubbly waters. There's lots of bubbly Yeah, there's different kinds. Seltzer water is not the same. Seltzer water is, um, has a lot of calories in it. Um, it's just tonic. It's two. Club soda. Club soda is, club soda is, um, Calorie free. There's um, what else is there? That there's some. There are some waters out there that are that have bad flavors in them, but they're not. And they're sparkling, but they're not. They don't have calories in them. The only bad thing about those is they've got a um, they've got aspartame and stuff like that in them. Which one does it? Lacroix. Lacroix doesn't? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I got. Is that? Yeah. I've never tasted that one. Yeah, somebody else is telling about soda water, but yeah, it's not Yeah, and those have flavors, so those are good. Those are good to make smoothies. Coffee, water, and bubbles. Yeah, do you know what it is? What kind it is? Well, I have the machine at home, and I might. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you would just be making, you were just making basically cup soda. Right. Yeah, so if you're making your own, and you're not putting anything in it, that's good. Yeah. But it's just like, there's different. There's seltzer water, there's... Um, Tonic, yeah, no. those are going to have a lot of calories in them, and they sneak up on you. Okay, so the last thing I really want to talk about, and I won't, I'm going to spare y'all, so I'm going to send this to you. Everybody's going to get this in email. Um, is a thing on sleep. So how important do you think sleep is? And I was thinking about you the other day, when I, or last night when I read this. How much sleep do you get? Not eight hours, honest. Yeah, honest. Yeah. Do you think you have at least four hours? Oh. Do you get seven? Yeah. I don't either. Who who all here gets seven to eight hours? Oh. Dang! <laughs> super awesome. You guys get gold stars. I feel you if you don't. I do not. And this after reading this, I mean this is this thing, you know, people tell you, yeah, you know, we really should get sleep. But I'm just going to go quickly over, you know, I know I've said some, I've mentioned some, but, you know, sleeping is when you build the most cortisol in your body. Um, but actually, they have, now that they've gotten super good at picking up, they've got, I mean, they, they do actually have the fat gene, the thing that makes you, Fat, the thing that makes you crave, the thing that makes you hungry, they, they have names for them. And I, I bet it won't be too much longer before they figured a way to suppress that, and, which would be nice that we would pop a pill and not have to worry about that. And then people that overeat then, at that point, it's completely psychological at that. But it's not here yet. So in the meantime, um, uh, I want to, I'm not going to read this because y'all can read this later, but I highly encourage you to read this entire article about sleep and then get out there and research it more. But this is just sort of a short and sweet about, but 
it basically, when you don't sleep, and it just takes a matter of four days to have sleep deprivation, and the sleep deprivation is not getting seven to nine hours of sleep a day. I am so sleep deprived. I didn't go to sleep till three o'clock last night. I just don't sleep. So, I feel you. This is all about me. This is all about me. Yeah. Um, just after four days, you start going into a mental grogginess, which can lead you can be the same as being drunk. And I know that they're doing more studies now with people driving and that same sort of grogginess and being worse than texting and driving, worse than drinking and driving, is being sleep deprived and driving. We get so good at it though. I'm so good at it. <laughs> um, so they're saying that people that experience sleep deprivation lose about 55% of their weight loss ability. So you're doing everything right. You're exercising, right? <coughs> you're battling these things in your body. So hormones, again. Um, so it changes, it changes your insulin function. I just want to be sure I didn't say these two. So it's the two hormones that you're looking for is leptin and ghrelin. Leptin is the hormone that produces in your fat cells. The less leptin you have that you produce, the more your stomach feels empty. So leptin is going to be our awesome drug that they're going to come with up with in about 20 years or so that we can take. <laughs> um, the more ghrelin, ghrelin that you produce, the more you stimulate hunger. So while reducing the amount of calories that you're burning, so it's reducing your metabolism and increasing the amount of fat that you store. So basically you have to control those two things to successfully lose weight. But when you're sleep deprived, those two things do the opposite of what they're supposed to do. So now you're fighting that. So if you feel like you're always sort of craving something and, you're, and it feels uncontrollable, like right? you don't know, everybody says, well, you should just be able to do it. Well, you're just not working out hard enough. Or you're just not, and you're just not. It may not be, it may be what your, your sleep habits as a possibility. Now, it's probably not gonna be all, but you know, it's just like one thing, it gets another thing, it gets another thing. So you end up in this vicious cycle. And I would say this year, this has been me for sure, the amount of stress I've had, the amount of you know, lack of sleep, and the struggle's been real. Usually I drop away as soon as I decide, okay, I'm not playing. So I get in there, I'm gonna do it. It is not coming off. It's not coming off. And that has a lot to do with hormonal issues. So this is a hormonal issue, is sleeping. So it's so, so important, especially if you're working your body hard to get that needed sleep. And apparently it's going to have to come, but like, I don't know what I'm gonna have to do to myself, but if you're in that same boat and you're not sleeping, you need to figure out a way to change that and see how that works for you. Who are you? Okay. I was going to say, I get seven to eight hours a night, but I just got up this morning, but I have water sleep out again. Um, so you're not getting good sleep? No, he said, you know, I wake up 22 times an hour. Right. And, um, so that's why you probably wake up exhausted. Yeah, and I just don't forever feel like I can function so this is probably you because just because it, you close your eyes and it may feel like you're asleep if you're not getting good sound sleep and if you're having issues like that mine's probably because I sleep with my husband who's got sleep apnea who just doesn't want to slit his throat I didn't say that out <laughs> maybe just smother um, yeah it makes it difficult to sleep. Sleeping's hard. Sleeping's hard. It's a, it's a task for me because I'm busy. No, he doesn't. We don't. Technically, we don't say he has that. Okay. It's <laughs> you don't want to report. Right, exactly. Nailed it. That's where we're at right now. Um, but it's very painful, I guess. I stayed at a Holiday Inn last night, and I know that that's what's going on. So. <laughs> I might, yeah, I, I would, at this point, I wouldn't be willing to try anything, but I have tried a lot of their eating technique, too, that they taught my daughter who couldn't fall asleep. Right. And um, I'll have to ask her about it. 
Yeah, and I know I just download. There's all kind of apps and things that yeah. you can listen to. That this one is like me. I don't think I can listen to that. I can't do it. Turn but, on the blue light on your phone on your iPad. I didn't do that for four months. Three years ago, I gained 12 pounds. Turn it at that light. Turn on the blue light or wear filtered glasses. Cause yeah, that makes your brain think it's daylight. Yeah, no, I, and that's me on the point. <laughs> I got my iPhone like this. This is where I was writing all this last night. I'm just kidding. Um, anybody have any questions? <coughs> yep. Any ideas? Um, any 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 tips or anything else that can help you? Any any struggles that you're having right now that you? I have one tip. I had a hard time uh, drinking water like all the time, and so I had a cup with a straw. I found it easier to drink out of the straw and like finish my mm -hmm. cup. Yeah, it does for me too. I feel that. Anybody else have any tips that they would like to share with your teammates? The only thing I drink is water. Yeah. Maybe one cup of black coffee or one and a half cup of black coffee. And it's weird. I mean, I started doing it over a year ago. And it's past 10 years. And I'm trying to get yeah. him to do the same thing. But I'm and water <laughs> is, that's sort of the way I am too. And trying not to, that's just. Unless it's sort of some alcoholic beverages. Yeah, I drink. <laughs> Anybody else? How does everybody feel like they're doing in their food department? I got a better scale that helps me. Like, you can weigh it up, like, do a cup or whatever, right. but, like, legitimately weighing everything gives you the exact amount. I highly and recommend in, that. In my fitness pal, every food that I've ever found, you can do it, like, by one ounce and then just put it in whatever ounces. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. And that really is what's going to help you, is seeing that. And at, one, at some point, you'll get to a place where you can recognize it, what it, what it looks like. But even then, that's, you know, I've used some sort of food journaling or, you know, and I've been training for 10 years. It just, it always helps to, like, re-put it up in your face. So if you feel like you're slipping, you might be. <laughs> Anybody else have anything? No questions? Anything you're afraid to say? You want to talk to me later? I mean, so the other account with her, like, because I have a couple of people that I text and that text me saying, I'm going to be at such and such class, right. or that's really good for me. Yeah. So I don't know if anybody wants to give me their phone number or whatever. I'm going to be going to lunch next. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you going to have? Water. Basil beef and the uh, happy doodle. <laughs> Vodka soda. <laughs> it's, I mean, this is, uh, y'all are doing a great job, and especially you can continue to journal and keeping all your information up. And, you know, and I don't get to, I don't get to look through everybody's all the time, but I do look through some of them randomly. And that's just what I have noticed is a lot of going out to eat. And going out to eat is just, there's just no, I mean, save that for the special times. There's just no way to control what you're going to get out of it. And, I mean, you can, there are a lot of things that you can do to help, like to <coughs> make, you know, substitutions, everything a chef hates, but there's no way to get it when you know exactly what's in there. So it's always best, if, and it's cheaper, save some money. Anything else? Anybody have anything else? I will send this to y'all and then read the article about sleep. And if you know somebody, if it's not you, but you know somebody, if you're waking up well rested and you just, you know, get out like a princess and you get out of bed in the morning, that's awesome. I know we're very fortunate because that's not everybody. I do not do that. You know what happens when I say, I'm not school phone oriented or
Colorado would never, ever be at that kind of thing. Right. So, but we're going to start. You and I are all the time. Here. All the time. Like, right now, all the time. Because we're going to make fun of me because it's going to be 2, 1.30 to 3. My show down. Right. My system shut completely down. I think they could be talking to me and I'm like, <laughs> I could be on Disney and the park and I, I melt. It's like my system shut down. And it's because I'm ready. Right now, I'm finished. Right now.